All right, so if we use Mirage to gauge wind speed and direction, the question comes up, just exactly what am I talking about when I say Mirage? Well, anytime the big heat tab in the sky is available, the sun is heating the Earth. And when the Earth gets warm, the air immediately above it gets warmer, and that warm air starts to rise. Well, that warm air is less dense than the cool air it's moving into. So now what you get is kind of a shimmer effect. And everybody has seen it. I mean, just look down uh, a tar road during the middle of the day, and everything appears to be wavy, kind of like looking through a swimming pool. Right? That's mirage. And since the air mass moves, that mirage shifts. It tilts left, right, forward, backward, based on the wind direction and speed. So if we use a spotting scope, something with a high resolution, we can use that mirage to tell us a lot about both the speed and the, the direction of the wind. So if the wind uh, and the mirage start to look like this, in your spotting scope, you see kind of little squiggly lines going straight up like this. What you have is a wind that's doing one of three possible things. Either there's no real wind, the air isn't actually moving at all and the heat is just straight rising right up. Or the wind is moving directly away from or directly towards your position. It's not a crosswind value at the point you have in focus. This is where the focal point of the spotting scope becomes important. And what I normally ask you to do is start with your focus on the target and then pull back to about mid-range. Start at that mid-range point. Because if you're focused on the target and you're seeing this at the target, does the bullet actually fly through that air? The answer is no. The bullet has hit the target at that point. That's not the air the bullet's flying through. You want the air in between you and the target. And start that as your first focus point. Now what happens is as the wind starts to move across the range, your mirage will start to form angles. until it finally gets what we call a running mirage, where it appears flat. Now, as the angle approaches about 30 degrees, you're looking at somewhere between two and five miles an hour. As the angle approaches 45 to 50 degrees, you're looking at five to eight miles an hour. And as the wind flattens it out, you start to look at the eight to 10 miles an hour. And now, if your spawning scope has enough resolution, what I look at is the actual amplitude of the wave. This is slower than this. And the question is, how well can you define those waves? Now, when you look at an angled mirage like this, the question is, well, is it blowing straight across the range, or is it blowing in at 11 o'clock or away at 5 o'clock? For this, you twiddle the focus knob slightly, looking at the bottom and the top of your focal plane. And if you twiddle it away and it starts to go out of focus here, right, or you twiddle it in and it starts to go out of focus here, that's telling you which direction it's going, whether it's quartering in toward you as the bottom goes out of focus, or whether it's going away from you. That's one of those things that's perception-based and depends upon how well your telescope focuses and how well you think about what you're seeing. The other method you can use is to simply rotate the spotting scope on its tripod. Right? Because 
If you've got an angle like this and you turn the spotting scope toward this angle, at some point, the mirage will do this. It'll be straight up because you're what? Pointed dead into or dead away from the wind. So there's more than one way to figure out the angle here because you can also use the surrounding trees, grass, dust being blown, etc. So what you're trying to do is see every indicator that you can downrange. Any and all wind indicators should be used to get you the wind speed and direction at multiple points along the bullet's flight. Then you add all that together, get a net crosswind value, make your wind call, and apply your hold.